So what we are going to do right now is we are going to dive right into the next part of carbohydrates, which are disaccharides. We've covered monosaccharides earlier, so now we're going to look at disaccharides. Now, by definition, disaccharides are basically made up of two monosaccharides linked together by condensation, and they are forming a glycosidic bond. So there are three key points here that we have to know. The first key point is basically two monosaccharides linked together through a process known as condensation. I'm going to talk about condensation in a while. And they form a type of covalent bond known as a glycosidic bond. So I've highlighted those keywords and those are the ones that you have to understand over here. Going back to a bit of revision, what exactly are monosaccharides? There are three types of monosaccharides that we saw in the previous video. We saw triose sugars, pentose sugars, and hexose sugars. Hexose sugars are just basically sugars with six carbon. And we saw four types of hexose sugars, which are alpha glucose, beta glucose, fructose, and galactose. Now in this video, we are going to be focusing on the two monosaccharides, which are alpha glucose and fructose. I've put like a purple star over there. So that, that's our main two focus for today. One of the first examples of a disaccharide would be a sugar known as maltose. Maltose is actually a type of disaccharide. And if you notice over there, maltose is actually also referred to as a sugar. Maltose is a disaccharide that is made up of two alpha glucose molecules linked together by a glycosidic bond. It is extremely important for you to understand this because I've had students make these mistakes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out two alpha glucose molecules at the bottom. Now, if you see those two alpha glucose molecules at the bottom, can we call that maltose? No, we can't. We cannot call that maltose. That is not maltose because even though you see two alpha glucose molecules there, they are not linked together. So what you see over there are just two separate monosaccharides. However, when I join, when I link a purple line between the two alpha glucose molecules representing the glycosidic bond, then you may refer to that molecule as a maltose sugar which is a disaccharide. Another very important question that I do get asked by students is, what is the difference between covalent bond and glycosidic bond? Because that does come out often. A glycosidic bond is a type of covalent bond that is only found in carbohydrates. Meaning to say, you will not be able to find glycosidic bonds in, let's say, a protein, lipids, or nucleic acids. It is very specific to just carbohydrates. Now, aside from maltose, the next disaccharide is known as sucrose, which is also a type of sugar. Instead of being made up of two alpha glucose molecules, sucrose is actually made up of one alpha glucose molecule and one fructose molecule. If you see that F FRU over there, uh, that's just my way of representing the fructose. And also remember, the alpha glucose and fructose must be linked together by something known as a glycosidic bond, which is a type of covalent bond found in carbohydrates. If uh, I am repeating myself, so don't get too annoyed because that is a very important thing to know uh, about these glycosidic bonds linking two monosaccharides together. Now, sucrose, if you have not heard of sucrose, you might know something known as table sugar. Like, you know, the sugar that you use to put in your tea or coffee. I mean, I, I put that in my, I put a lot of it in my coffee, which I shouldn't, but I do. Um, and table sugar is basically just sucrose. So table sugar is actually just made up of alpha glucose and fructose linked together by a glycosidic bond. There we go. So we have a real life example of a carbohydrate right there. Now that we are acquainted to the two types of disaccharides, maltose and sucrose, we do have to talk about their formation. How are you able to form a maltose sugar and how are you able to form a sucrose sugar from monosaccharides? Now, maltose is actually made up of two alpha glucose undergoing a condensation reaction. 
And for those of you who do not know what a condensation reaction is, uh, no, this has nothing to do with the condensation where, um, you know, water vapor becomes liquid. This is not that condensation. In biological molecules, when I say condensation reaction, we are referring to a chemical process where water molecules are removed from the molecules. So what do I mean by that? First and foremost, I will draw out two alpha glucose molecules. Remember, alpha glucose, when you're drawing it, put the oxygen and then link the carbon skeleton together first. Always remember when you're labeling the carbon, it's one, two, three, four, five, six in a clockwise direction. This is universal. And then what we do is we, put, we just basically put in the OH groups. Now you might be thinking, hey, wait a second, I thought alpha glucose also has the hydrogen. Why aren't you including the hydrogen? The hydrogen is not really that important, but it's important to include the hydroxyl OH groups because they are important for the condensation reaction. Now next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and you can see the two alpha glucose molecules. We have to remove a water molecule between the two alpha glucose molecules. Some students will think, oh, I have to remove H2O from one alpha glucose molecule and a H2O from another alpha glucose molecule. No, you just have to remove a total of one H2O. What that means is I can remove one hydrogen and one oxygen from one alpha glucose and another hydrogen from the other alpha glucose molecule, as I've highlighted for you. And we are only going to focus on carbon number one and carbon number four. I've already put a red line over there for you to refer to. We are not going to focus on the other carbons at all. There's a reason for this, and I'll explain that later. Now, so in carbon number one, I want to remove hydrogen and oxygen. And for carbon number four, I want to remove hydrogen. Or what I can do is, in carbon number one, I can just basically remove hydrogen. And carbon number four, I can remove oxygen and hydrogen. It doesn't matter. We are going to remove H2O from them. Okay. So that has been removed from the two alpha glucose molecules and that becomes the removal of H2O. That is what is meant by condensation reaction right there. You can see that there's an oxygen left in one of that alpha glucose molecule. What that oxygen does is that oxygen will now link the alpha glucose on the left and the alpha glucose on the right. What that becomes now is the glycosidic bond. That is how the glycosidic bond is formed between the two alpha glucose molecules. Lo and behold, what do we have here? We have one maltose sugar, which is the disaccharide. And when we are labeling the glycosidic bond, this is also very important. The name of this glycosidic bond, yes, there's a specific name to it. We will call it the 1,4 glycosidic bond. Can you guess why it's called 1,4 glycosidic bond? Well, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? It's because it is between carbon number one and carbon number four of the two alpha glucose molecules. Hence, we call it 1,4 glycosidic bonds. That's what it means. Another very important question that we can ask is, can other types of glycosidic bonds form between two alpha glucose? For example, we saw alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds happen. Can it form, you know, I don't know, alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds? Can it form alpha 2,6 glycosidic bonds? Or what about even alpha 4,6 glycosidic bonds? Can all these type of glycosidic bonds form? Well, there is no probable answer for all of them, okay? What we do have to understand is in nature, in, in living organisms, uh, in cells, whether animals or plants or protists or whatever, the most common glycosidic bonds that form between alpha glucose is either alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds and al or alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds. Now, I'm not saying that other types of glycosidic bonds may not be able to be formed. However, in nature, they are not so common. 
And for your syllabus, you do not have to know all these other types of glycosidic bonds. The ones that you will have to know is alpha-1-4 glycosidic bonds or alpha-1-6 glycosidic bonds. Those are the two common ones that usually form in the natural environment. Or those are the two common glycosidic bonds that form in living organisms. And something very important to be said over here is, what you're looking at over here is a disaccharide where two alpha glucose are linked together by alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds. Now, can we refer to this as maltose? No, we cannot refer to this as maltose. Immediately, I can hear the collective groan of students. You're like, oh my God, really? Why is this not maltose? I can see two alpha glucose. I can see they are linked together by glycosidic bonds. Why can't I refer to this as maltose? The answer is also very simple. We cannot refer to this as maltose because maltose is only formed when two alpha glucose are linked, are linked together by alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds. It is extremely specific when it comes to biological molecule. Biochemistry is like that. When you join the alpha glucose a different way, they are referred to as a different name. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so what's the name of that disaccharide on the right then? You don't have to know its name. We do not have to cover that in detail. You just have to know that alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds between two glucose molecules, you cannot refer to them as maltose. Maltose is only formed when two alpha glucose molecules are linked together by alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds. That's all we have to know for this. Going on to the next disaccharide, the one that we have to see is sucrose. Now, the good news is you just have to recognize sucrose's uh, structural formula. You are not required to draw out the formation of the disaccharide. And remember, Fructose has a rather odd shape. It looks like a pentagon. Even though it looks like a pentagon, it is still a hexose sugar. It's still a six carbon sugar. And the formation of sucrose is when you have one alpha glucose linked together to the sucrose molecule. If you notice my sucrose molecule, it has been rotated 180 degrees. You just have to be aware that that happens. You don't have to memorize that. Do not worry about it. And what you have right there is a sucrose molecule. And it's very important to know that a sucrose is a disaccharide formed by glycosidic bonds between one alpha glucose and one fructose molecule. That's about it. Nothing much to know there in detail. Some common questions that can be asked, especially in paper one, um, will include the molecular formula of maltose and sucrose. This is an extremely important question because many students make mistakes over here. Now, the common mistake that students will make is they'll assume that alpha glucose is C6H12O6. Another alpha glucose is also C6H12O6. So if they are linked together, maltose should definitely be C12H24O12. Now, that is wrong, by the way. Huge mistake. You might be thinking, why? Again, it's very simple. Remember, if you want to join one alpha glucose to another alpha glucose molecule, it's a condensation reaction. And in condensation reactions, it involves the removal of a water molecule. So when you form the maltose, you will have to remove two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen, which is water. Therefore, the molecular formula of maltose is actually C12H22O11. That is the correct molecular formula of maltose. So please do not make that mistake in the exam. It's not C12H24O12, it's C12H22O11. And the same can also be said about sucrose because alpha glucose is C6H12O6, Fructose is also C6H12O6. When you join it together, sucrose is not C12H24O12. You will still have to remove one water molecule due to condensation reactions. So therefore, sucrose is also C12H22O11. That's about it. 
And towards the final part of this video, we do have to talk about something called hydrolysis or the hydrolytic reactions. Hydrolysis is the, well, you can kind of say it's the opposite of condensation because in condensation, two monosaccharides are linked together to become a disaccharide and you need to remove water. So hydrolysis is the opposite. Hydrolysis is what happens when a disaccharide is broken down or the glycosidic bond in the disaccharide is broken down by adding a water molecule. So how does that look like? So what I have over here is I am showing you a maltose molecule that we saw much earlier. And I want to break down that glycosidic bond. So if I want to break that glycosidic bond, the disaccharide will have to undergo a process known as hydrolysis. And in hydrolysis, you have to add water so how will the maltose molecule be broken down? First, I'm just going to draw out the water right there, which is required to break the glycosidic bond. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the glycosidic bond right there and put the oxygen back to the alpha glucose on the left. There we go. But this alpha glucose is not complete yet. You know, it's still a bit empty. You know, some things are still missing. What we do is we split the water into OH and H. And the hydrogen will go towards the alpha glucose on the left, reforms the hydroxyl group over there, and the OH goes to the alpha glucose on the right and reforms the hydroxyl group there. And lo and behold, what do we have here? We have reformed two alpha glucose molecules right here. And both of these are monosaccharides. That is how hydrolysis will happen. Same thing, if sucrose undergoes hydrolysis, you will have to add a water molecule and it will break down into alpha glucose and fructose. The reason why it is called hydrolysis is because the word lysis means to break and hydro means using water. So hydrolysis basically means to break something using water molecules. That's what it means.